Yo, Elliot, I've been in your program for seven months. I've been really diving deep and taking my time on every lesson, going back over and over again, watching the videos. I've been sticking to the commandments, even though some days I fail, especially when it comes to the effeminate pleasures I enjoy. I'm a turbulent advocate with uh, four kids. I've recently started understanding the concept of throning after months of trying to figure it out. For those of you who don't know, that's a word that we use here in the King Transformation program about that requires us to sit. It's kind of like meditation. We call it throning. He says, it's amazing. I'm able to prevent all the nonsense fights in my life because I realized it was my own thoughts festering, turning into stories, and then I would react to them. Yep. My question is, when trying to listen to my intuition, how do I react to my intuition properly if there's no evidence of the deed, but I feel something is going on? In the past, this is exactly what would cause fights, uh, is me listening to my intuition and taking action on it right away with no evidence, which turns into unnecessary drama, particularly with my wife. My intuition has been right on most occasions when it comes to reading people and my wife, and I both acknowledge I am able to tell when something is just not right. I want to trust my intuition, but it feels like a double-edged sword. How do I balance this throning, which is helping me not have unnecessary fights and also listening and or reacting properly to my intuition? Thanks for your advice a few months ago about uh, reigning in my frame, regaining my frame. Things have not been this good between my wife and I for years. That is great news, dude. And I, I love having you here. And I love hearing how things are working out for you. Now, uh, I do have something to say about this quote unquote intuition. Uh, there is a book by a guy named Max, Max, Max Gladwell, right? I wish I could remember the name of the book. But in this book, he talks about how really, really good artists or really good investigators or really good professionals at certain things develop an intuition about stuff, right? They develop an intuition. Notice that word, develop an intuition. And what he described, what he says in this book is that this intuition is developed through thin slicing. And this thin slicing happens by their recognition of evidence, real evidence, over and over and over again. And so when someone who has a strongly developed intuition makes an assertion, it is because they've made time and time again, they've made judgments based on what um, evidence they see. So intuition is a tricky thing. Intuition is very tricky and you need, very tricky and you need to be cautious of it because evidence is either logical, I see it, there it is, aha, I got it, or emotional, feeling. Feeling, using intuition as a tool of feeling is very slippery, slippery slope because, it, because you can have trauma from the past, right? That, that, that uh, skews your feelings, right? So just I use this for example. And this is a very bad example, but you see what I'm saying. So say you were dating a girl one time and she used, she used to like wearing uh, uh, really short shorts, right? I'm dating this girl, we're doing really well. And she, she, has a, she has long legs and she wears really short shorts. And then she cheats on you. You're like, wow, this is terrible. And then it ruins your relationship and you break up. And then you date another woman and you guys are together and things are great. And then one day she comes out with short shorts and you're like, <gasps> she must be cheating on me. She's probably gonna leave me. She's showing all that leg. I remember when my last girlfriend was showing off all her legs. Or, or a better example would be like Instagram, right? Which I don't think, I would never wanna be with a woman that has racy pictures on Instagram. But let's say you're dating a woman and she has all these racy pictures and she cheats on you. And then you got another girl who's not cheating on you, but because she has those pictures, you say, oh, she must be cheating on me. It's because you have emotional trauma from a past experience lurk, creeping up and showing itself, right? Both of those situations I would avert anyway. I wouldn't want to be with a woman to dress promiscuously or has racy pictures on Instagram. But 
there's a difference between facts and feeling. Whatever you're going through with regard to your wife and your intuition, you cannot hang your hat on it unless you have real evidence, real evidence. And that means you might need to go find some evidence, right? And, and look, sometimes you go looking for evidence and you find what you're looking for, meaning you make stuff up. So again, you gotta be very careful. You gotta be very careful. My advice is to be very cautious with this intuition right now. Even if it has been right in the past, it's not based on anything logical. Intuition for most people is not based on anything logical. It's not like Malcolm Gladwell says, his name is Malcolm Gladwell. That's the name of the guy. And I think Toby calls, says it, the book was Blink. I think it might be Blink, Blink or Outliers. I don't even remember. But I think both of those books are very similar anyway. This was many years when I read those books. Malcolm Gladwell. And this whole thin slicing phenomenon, he asserts rightly that isn't just magical intuition. <laughs> it comes from years and years of paying very close attention, adding things up, looking for more evidence, investigating. And then after years and years of doing that, it don't take much for you to see something and say, okay, I've investigated this type of situation a hundred times. I know what this is. It's not intuition. It's what he calls thin slicing. It's like, I only need a thin slice to know what's behind that whole picture over there. I just need a little slice and I see the whole picture. Why? Not because I'm a guru, not because you know I'm praying to crystals and believing in my feelings and intuition. All that is feminist garbage. It's because I've earned the capacity to see something that most people can't see. You see what I'm saying? So, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm steering away from giving you advice about you and your relationship. And I, I'm focusing this more on you not trusting your intuition just for, you know, the sake of feeling. It says, how do I balance this throning, which is helping me not have unnecessary fights and also listening and reacting properly to my intuition? Keep throning, keep throning. The, 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 the thing is when you sit, you get a chance to confront your feelings. And like I said, a lot of times those feelings are just old trauma, right? It's old stuff. I get these feelings, weird feelings sometimes too. And I have to confront them. And I'm like, this is not true, right? Do I have any evidence that it's not true? No. Do I have evidence that it is true? No. But I do know I'm just having feelings. And it's better not to entangle myself with various aspects of my life because of my feelings. It's better that I look for evidence. It's better that I wait for evidence to show itself to me, right? It's better for me to get active in exploration if it's necessary. A lot of times it's not. But for me to take an action based on my feeling, listen, I've done it and I was wrong. And I made big mistakes, I would say. And so if you, and you see how your life is actually getting better, notice it for what it is. It's an old habit. It's an old response to a, to a, 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 a trauma, right? It's a cramp in your limbic system. It's a demon that seeks to derail you. It comes from outside and it destroys your inside but it's not logical at all. You know, I've, I've come full circle in my life and I know I've made lots of videos where I'm talking about trust your intuition, trust your feeling. And there's a time and there's a place for that. But as I've grown in wisdom, <laughs> as I've made mistakes, uh, I rely and I have to assert that you must rely more on logic, man. I think the whole intuition thing and the feeling thing that I even fell into was a byproduct of the effeminization of our culture. It's the emasculization of men. It is making us more like women. women. Women base their lives on feeling and it's okay. They're supposed to, but we can't all be women, right? This is why marriages don't work a lot of times, relationships don't work, because the woman stops respecting a man because the man acts like a woman. And she, unless she's a lesbian, she doesn't want you to act like a woman. And she wants you to be a man. What is a man? The head. What is the head? Logic. 
think, be stoic, slow down. Don't be effeminate. Don't be emotional. Throne, my bro. And that's what you're doing. And you're on the right track. And I'm glad to see things are unfolding for you perfectly. Don't go screw it up. If there's something that comes to light that needs to be addressed, you address it then. If you need to do some investigating and just like a detective who's being logical and, and um, objective, maybe you have to do that, right? I know a lot of guys like, you know, I've seen it happen in my family where I, I was speaking with a, a, one of my cousins and her husband, it happened to both of them, right? One of my aunts wasn't very truthful. And then she married a, 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 a man, you know, he, they're older now. Um, that her parents weren't youthful. They both found out later in life that their parents lied to them, lied to them about who their fathers were. They're both women, both of their moms, <laughs> right? Go figure. Both of their moms lied to them about who their father was. And they didn't know their whole life until a spot of evidence showed up. My cousin, she discovered it because she was in a, um, my cousin looks white, right? Like whiter than me, right? She got like green eyes. You could tell that she's a little bit mixed, but she's whiter than me uh, as, a, as, a, as a mixed person. But all her siblings were black, like legit black. Right, like my, I have cousins that are black. Like you walk in, there's no confusion. You look at me and it's like, a little confusion, but they call you black regardless. My cousin, she looks even whiter than me. She could really pass for white, but all her siblings, and you know, we come from a mixed family. We're from Belize. So she just believed, oh, you know, it's no big deal. I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we have, I've mixed in my ancestry, which is true. So she never questioned why all her siblings were black and she looked white. Her mom told her that, you know, they all had this, you all had the same father. And it's just because her and her mom is whitish. My, my aunt, her mom, is, she was, and she died, but she was whitish. She had even had red hair, right? So she just believed I took after my mom a little bit more. It's no big deal. It wasn't until she went into uh, high school and they did a genetics course, you know, they teach genetics in class and they teach you like how to know, like, you know, what kind of traits you're going to have. And they did like these little charts, like these little DNA charts. <laughs> and she went, and she's in class and she's doing a chart and she's like, wait a second, this doesn't add up. If this science is true, then I should be black too. And so she found out why, how? Evidence. She had some evidence. She was like, wait a second, this doesn't add up. And maybe if you have some suspicions, you got to go get some evidence, right? If you have some suspicions that I don't, this child might not be mine, right? And maybe, maybe you're just, it's just, it's just your emotions, right? But maybe, and I don't know you and your wife and how things are between you, but maybe it'd be worthwhile doing a little investigation, but you got to be mindful. You don't do the investigation out of feeling, you do it out of out of um, evidence, right? There must be ample evidence and you're trying to gather more. So anyway, I'm talking a little bit too long on this one. The bottom line here is do don't rely on your intuition as such. You need evidence. And as you develop your thin slicing ability, intuition gets sharpened and developed. Don't use your raw intuition. Don't trust raw intuition. Just like any other skill, like logic is a skill too. Logic takes time to develop logic, right? Intuition takes time. You got to develop intuition. Anyway, so that's it. That's my opinion on that. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.